Welcome to our introduction to Google Classroom 101. This video will guide you through the essential features and functionalities of Google Classroom. We will go over how to accept classes, link your classes with Infinite Campus, how to manage your Google Classroom, how to create some assignments, what the student's view will look like, and so much more. Let's dive in now. You will see your provisioned classes in Google Classroom at classroom.google.com or by navigating through your waffle. You will see the blue accept and the blue decline. Always accept your classes. Once you accept your class, you will see your students that are in your classroom. You can navigate to your other classes by clicking on classroom and you will see any other classes you need to accept. Always accept the class, and if you do not need it, you can archive that class. Your Google Classroom will reflect the rosters that are in your Infinite Campus. Now, let's link our class. When linking your Google Classroom with Infinite Campus, it is very important that you link the correct class. Your course number and section must match what is Infinite Campus and with the provisioned Google Classroom. We're going to check out my eighth grade mathematics course first. You can always check to make sure that your roster matches the roster in Google Classroom. We see our course number in our roster. Now let's maneuver back to our Google Classroom to link the class. This is our Dash 2 class. You can always change the name of your course, but you must ensure that you are linking the correct class. Let's link this one now. We're going to select the link class, wait for our classes to load. Now again, this is just going to show all of our classes, but we know the class we are trying to link is our Dash 2 class. We'll want to select that now and hit link. We can now see that this class our Dash 2 class is linked with the correct Infinite Campus class. Let's quickly link one more class. We're going to link our first period class. As you can see, I have customized my class completely, and we are going to link our first period. If the class is already linked, we cannot link it or select it again. And now both of our classes have been linked with Infinite Campus. If you have accidentally linked the incorrect course code to your Google Classroom, we can walk through unlinking that information from Campus to Classroom through our settings. We'll select the Settings gear, scroll down. Under General, you will see an Unlink option. You will get a pop-up that asks if you're sure, and then simply hit unlink. Now let's get into how we can keep our Google Classroom organized. The stream in Google Classroom is a central place where you can see all the activity in your class. You can see posts from students, announcements from teachers, and assignments that are due. You can also use the stream to start conversations with students and teachers. To access the stream, once in your Google Classroom, you can select stream at the top of the page. The stream will display all the latest activity in your class organized by date. As we scroll through the stream, we can see assignments that have been posted and announcements that have been made. Teachers can also share materials such as class notes. The stream is a good way to stay up to date on what's happening in your class and connect with the students. Students can comment on announcement and posts in the stream. To create a new announcement, Click on Announcement. We type in what we'd like to announce to our class. You can select the drop down for four and post in multiple classes if you'd like. If you need to attach a document, a video, or a file, you can do so as well. To schedule a post, click the drop down and select Schedule, or you can simply just post it now. If you have an announcement that you would like to stay at the top of your stream, select the three dots and move to top. I like to select to have my welcome to the class post at the top at all times. You can also reuse a post in your stream. 
By selecting on these arrows for reuse post, you can select a post from a different class from previous years. The stream is a great way to get conversations started with students. Students can see each other's comments. You'll see how many comments are on each post and you can select to see each one. If you have a student that you wish to no longer be able to post in the stream, you can select to just mute that student. If a student is muted, they can still complete work. They simply cannot comment or post in the stream. Students can also make their own posts to start conversations about assignments or the class. You can use the stream to share your thoughts and ideas, and so can the students. The stream is a great place for students to get help from their classmates and teachers if you have multiple teachers in the classroom. If a student is muted, they must be unmuted to be able to post in the stream again. You will see what student is muted by selecting on people and you will see this red speaker right here. Select the three dots, unmute student. Teachers can also delete students' comments. In the People tab, you can see the list of students and teachers in the class. This is where we will add co-teachers as well. You will type in their email address and select Invite. Co-teachers can do the same task as primary teachers, except for deleting the class, remove the primary teacher, or transfer the ownership of the class, and mute other teachers in the class. As I stay the primary, this teacher can grade assignments, help manage the stream. They can post announcements and assignments as well, return the assignments and provide feedback. This teacher cannot mute me in the stream as I am the primary. It's crucial to recognize that Google Classroom can accommodate up to 20 teachers, allowing for an additional 19 co-teachers to be manually added. The student list is a direct reflection of the course and roster information in Infinite Campus, eliminating the need for a manual student additions or removals. When changes occur in Infinite Campus, expect student updates in Google Classroom within 24 to 48 hours. Teachers can invite guardians to receive summaries on their students' work and class announcements. This can be done by clicking on Invite Guardians and then typing in their personal email address. Keep in mind that this email address does not have to be a Gmail or Google email address to receive the invite. After they enter the email address, they'll simply hit invite. The guardian will receive an email that looks just like this. If they do not, they will need to check their junk or spam folder. They will hit accept to start receiving summaries. This summary will show the student's missing and upcoming work along with new posts from the teachers. They must hit accept invite to begin receiving summaries. The parent will then select the frequency of how often they would like to receive a summary. If they select no summaries, even though they've received an invite, they will not get any updates from this Google Classroom. I'm going to select a weekly summary along with ensuring that my time zone is correct. Please keep in mind that guardians that have been invited are not being added to the class. They cannot see the stream, people, classwork, and grades pages in Google Classroom. Invited guardians will receive an email of the student's work as a summary. This will include what is missing, so what the student has not turned in, and any upcoming work, whether it's due today or tomorrow. If they have selected to receive daily emails, they will get the summaries on a day-to-day -day basis. In these summaries, they will also see the class activity, such as announcements and questions or any posts by the teacher. The guardian summaries must be enabled by the teacher in their classroom by clicking on settings and scrolling down to guardian summaries. Ensure that the toggle is blue for the parents to begin receiving their emailed summary. Let's move over to the Classwork tab. The Classwork section in Google Classroom is where teachers can post assignments, quizzes, and other materials for students to access. Students can view all their assignments in one place. They can also submit their work and track their progress. The Classwork section is organized by week, and each assignment has its own tab. 
Students can click on an assignment tab to view the details, including the due date, instructions, and a rubric. Teachers can use the classwork section to track student progress and see which students have completed an assignment, and they can also see how students are doing for a particular assignment. This information can be used to identify students who need extra help or to provide feedback for their work. The classwork section is a valuable tool for both teachers and students. It helps teachers to organize their classes and helps students to stay on top of their assignments. Here we can see that one student has not completed the assignment, another student has turned in the assignment but it has yet to be graded, and two students have turned in the assignment and has been graded and received feedback. After clicking on Insights, you can find in-depth information regarding that assignment and your student's progress. You can see which students got that answer correct, which ones did not, and how many attempts each student had for that assignment. Clicking on the individual student will show you how they did and if the assignment has been graded. You can click on the student to see if they've started the assignment. If they have, we can select to give them a grade it looks like this student only answered one question, but that question was correct. We'll give them a C. After an assignment is graded, you must return the grade back to the student. This is where they will receive their feedback. Returning the grade is also important if you export your assignments and grades to Infinite Campus. Now that we know how to post and create assignments and schedule announcements, let's hop into managing and using Google Meet in our classroom. Using Google Meet in our Google Classroom allows a seamless integration of video conferencing in our virtual class. It enhances the overall learning experience by providing a platform for face-to-face -face discussions and activities like breakout rooms and live question and answers. It allows the students to work with their classmates on assignments and participate in face-to-face -face discussions. You can access your class Google Meet in your stream. After selecting stream, you will see an option to join a meet. You can manage the Google Meet settings by clicking on the three dots, selecting manage. Now we can toggle on for the meet to be visible for our students. We can also copy and reset the link or remove it completely. If we remove the link, we will need to generate a new one. The first time you use Google Meet, you will need to generate a link. I would suggest resetting the Google Meet link after every class. If you do not plan to use the Google Meet link or Google Meet option daily, you will want to select Manage and make it not visible for students. For now, we're going to have this visible for our students. When the students log in, they will see the option to join the Meet. Any co-teachers you have can also join the meet and begin the session. Only students rostered to that class can join your Google Meet. Let's join the meet now. Whoever generates the Google Meet link in Google Classroom will be the host. The host will have this lock option on the bottom corner. All the Google Meet links generated from Google Classroom will already have this enabled for the host must join before anyone else. This is what keeps your students from being able to access a Google Meet without you. If this is disabled, students can hop into the Google Meet at any time of the day from any device. It is very important that this is always enabled. Please keep in mind that any co-teacher can generate Meet links, reset the Meet, and host a session at any point in time. If you have a co-teacher that generates a link, they need to be the first person to enter. If you need to be the host of that Google Meet, you can select to manage, then reset the Google Meet. You can also manage your Google Meet by clicking on the settings, scrolling down to Meet, and then clicking on Save. You can also use Google Meet to create recordings of lectures or class sessions and post them in the stream. This is great for students that miss out on that day or if you might be out for a day but still want your students to participate in one of your lectures. Let's do that now. We've already created a Google Meet recording. Let's announce that to the class. You can select to add a link, upload a file, or select from your drive. Since we recorded with Google Meet, I'm going to select from my drive. This is where I will see all of my folders. 
After you create a Google Meet recording, you will then have a Meet Recordings folder in your drive. I'm now going to select my Google Meet recording for this class. Click. I now have my recording attached and instructions for my students. Again, we can select for this to be posted in multiple classes or just one. I'm going to select for my lecture to go through these three classes, and then I'm going to post now. In classwork, you also have the ability to create topics. Topics in Google Classroom are a way to organize your classes and assignments. They can be used to group assignments together and create a hierarchy of assignments in your classes. Topics can also be used to create a course syllabus or provide students with a roadmap to the class. To create a topic, select Create Topic and hit Add. We now have a new topic. You can move this topic up or down in your classwork tab. We already have two other topics, our geology and morning questions. As I create morning questions for this class, I can move them to this topic to help the students stay organized. I like to create a topic for each unit of my classes. This can help me track down work and to make it easier for students to find what they are looking for. In my syllabus topic, I can enter the grading criteria, a syllabus timeline, and the course objectives for the semester. This can help my students to understand what is expected of them and way to track and stay on top of their work. Overall, Topics is a valuable tool for organizing your classes and assignments in your Google Classroom. Students can search by topic if they believe that they are missing an assignment or if they want to reference a previous assignment. I have seen some teachers that like to use a topic for resources, such as adding extra documents, videos, or tools that will help the students throughout the class. After you've created your topics, you can select create and select to add an assignment or a material or even a quiz. We can now place this material under our resources topic and I can link a video or a document directly from my Google Drive. I'm now going to link my lesson plan for my students. When adding an assignment, material, or quiz, you can select for that to be posted in multiple classrooms or just the one. We can now see that that will be posted for three classes. You can schedule for a post to be set for a future date or post it now. We can now see that our math plan is under our resources. You can create quizzes and assignments and post them for future dates. In this assignment, I am going to attach a worksheet. In this assignment, the students will need to enter nouns, verbs, and adverbs and adjectives to create their own story. Instead of everyone viewing the same file, when the students open the document, it will create a file for them in their Google Drive. I've now selected for this assignment to go into three classes. I want to create a new topic. This topic is going to be for our English class, our English assignments. I'm going to select for this assignment to be ungraded, which means I'll give the students participation points just for completing the assignment. And I'm not going to export this assignment to Infinite Campus. We're now going to create our due date. You can select an actual time or just that by the end of the day. Closing submissions after due date will allow to students to no longer be able to submit the assignment after December 22nd. If this is left unchecked, even though the assignment is past due, the students may still be able to submit the assignment. I'm gonna schedule this assignment for a future post date. Under publish date, we're gonna select when would we like this assignment to be set in our class. I'm going to select December 4th. This is a great feature to use if there is a possibility of you being out or having a sub or during NTI. You can select to have different publish dates for different classes. Or you can select copy the same settings for all. It is very important that your publish date is before your due date. Assignments that have a publish date that is after the due date will not export to Infinite Campus. We are now scheduling that and we can now see our new topic and we have an assignment scheduled for this time and day. Our students will not be able to see the schedule assignment until the day that it is scheduled to post. Let's take a look at some of the different assignments we can create in Google Classroom. First, we'll start with creating interactive assignments with YouTube videos. 
Educators are now able to add questions to a YouTube video and assign it to students in classroom. As the video plays, students can answer the questions, get real-time feedback on their responses, and rewatch the video if needed. Let's create a YouTube interactive assignment now. We're going to select Create from our Google Classroom, Assignment, and then click on YouTube. Now, if you've recently made an assignment with a YouTube video, you may see that video here, or you can search a URL. We're going to enter our URL for our YouTube video, hit enter, and we can now see our video over the solar system. Then we're going to select to add questions. You can watch your full video or skip around to where you'd like to add the questions. I know that I want my first question to be around the 27 second mark. So we're going to jump there and we're going to hit add. This is going to be an open ended question. You can also adjust the time right here. How many planets are in our solar system? And now our video will continue to play or we can jump forward. If you don't want to do an open ended question, you can also do a multiple choice where you select the answers. We're going to select a shuffle order and we know that there are eight planets. We're going to save and continue. Now let's jump forward to the next one. Now I know because I've watched this video many times, I want my next question to be at the one minute and 28 second mark. We're going to add another question. Which planet is closest to the sun? And then again, we will put our answers in and let's shuffle that order. You can continue making questions throughout your video, selecting different spots to add new questions to. And then if you realize you forget one, you can always add another and adjust the time. We can now see our video and where each question will fall in line for that video. Once we've added all the questions and answers that we need, we can hit attach. Here we can write some instructions for our students and select our due date. We're going to select that this is going to be due today. And that this is going to go to all students. Then we'll hit assign. And we will now see that assignment here for our class. If we'd like, because this is only a five question assignment, we can just make it for five points. Let's view the insights. Just as with practice sets, we can see how our students did on the questions. The dark green check mark means they got the question right the first time. Light green means it took two or more. Red means they never got the question right. Please keep in mind with this assignment, the students can answer the questions as many times as they need. They can also rewind the video to find their answer. If the circle stays white or gray, that means they submitted the assignment without answering the question. You can select each individual student to see how many attempts they had and which questions were correct or incorrect. You can also provide a grade. We're gonna give this student five out of five. You can also provide private comments as well. And then we're going to return that grade. Now this student, they only got four questions correct. So we are going to go with the lower grade of a B minus. And this student skipped three questions. As you can see, it is ungraded, but they still got two correct.
Now the private comments go simply just to the student. We can post the see me and hit return. We can now see that we have four graded assignments. We can also view these grades in our classroom on the grades tab. Now let's go over practice sets in Google Classroom. Practice sets is a classroom feature that lets teachers transform their existing content into engaging interactive assignments. To create a new practice set or view your previous practice sets, you will find them in resources. Your resources tab will house all of your practice sets and interactive YouTube activities. If you want to see only your practice sets, select the drop down, hit practice sets, and then you will see all the practice sets that have previously been created and you can select new practice set to create a new one. To put a previously created practice set in an assignment, just head to your class, classwork, create assignment, and then select practice set. This will open a tab of all your practice sets and then select the light bulb so that it turns yellow. You can edit the practice set or go ahead and attach. You will now see that assignment in assign. Let's run through building a new practice set. We'll head to resources, new practice set. First, let's give our practice set a title. This one is gonna be our land forms quiz. We can enter our own questions, such as what is not a land form? And we can do a single select answer. Now that we've entered our question and answers, we want to make sure that we select the correct answer. We can also select skills for each question. We're going to select that this question is about the types of landforms, and that's the skill the student will need. We can also add resources. You can add your own resources that are saved in your Google Drive, or you can add hints. You can add up to 10 additional resources. We're going to say that we're going to give the students a hint that it's a natural feature. And if we want to see what that looks like for the student, we will select try as student. In our student view, we can see what the question would look like for the student. We can select the hint that we created. They have a show your work option. And they can check the answer to their question. And you can see the reaction the students will get when they select the correct answer. If you do not like the automated resources that are populated in your question, simply hit the X. You can also select extra help and you can search for other resources that you would like to add. You can also add your own resources by copy and pasting a YouTube URL directly into the question. You can now see that this video that we have grabbed from YouTube will come up in the resources for the student. When using the short answer option, the students must enter the exact answer that is put on the quiz or question. How? many continents are there and you can see with the short answer it also gives us suggestions using the settings you can allow equivalent answers and to ignore capitalization you can also have two answers so the students can write out seven or enter seven
Instead of entering questions one by one, you can import questions. PDFs that are stored in your Google Drive can be made into questions. We have this great Landforms worksheet that will now become our quiz questions. I'm going to just make a box here and another one here, another one here, and we're going to import those three. So you now see that each little clip is its own individual question. And I can put identify the landform on each one. Now for our answer. And once we have entered all of our questions, we can hit done editing. Now our landforms quiz will be listed in our practice sets and we can use it for an assignment or a quiz in any of our classes. Along with being able to import PDFs into practice set questions, you can select the plus sign to the right to insert content and import questions from Google Forms you've created. After hitting the plus, your Google Drive will open. Then you can select a Google Form to import questions. You'll click on the form, select import. I'll delete that top question. And now all of the questions and answers from my Google Form are on my quiz. Now all of my questions and answers from my Google Form are now in my practice set. After giving it a title, I can select Done Editing. And now my new practice set is listed in my resources. After our practice set has been assigned as coursework, we can view how the students did in our grades. Our practice set that was due today, our math test, will show us the insights on how our students did. This one shows us that many students got our problem eight incorrect and they struggled with problems one, two, and six. The dark green check mark shows us that the student got the answer correct the first time. The light green shows that it took two or more attempts for the student to get the answer correct. If it's red, the student submitted the assignment without selecting or knowing the correct answer. You can also assign grades. So we can see for this student, they got 7 out of 10, so unfortunately, they will get a 70. And then you can grade each one. And then we can return them all. You can click on the question number and view each answer your student had. Since most of our students got problem eight incorrect, this allows us to see what answer they thought it was. You can also look by individual student and scroll through their submission. You can provide private comments such as see me. Now back in our Google Classroom, we can see that we have four graded. We are still accepting submissions and the grades each student has. You can also view this in your grades tab. The new resources tab in classroom allows educators to more easily create, manage, and share interactive lessons like practice sets and video activities with YouTube. You can manage your practice sets and interactive activities all in one place. Let's get started now. Google Classroom automatically adds all of my practice sets and interactive video activities into my resources. If you have an activity you no longer need, you can delete it. If you accidentally delete a practice set or a video activity, you can click on the trash and it will be listed there. By clicking on the activity again, you can restore it back to your resources.
If you want to share your resources and lessons with your team, you would want to open the menu, create a shareable link, enable sharing, copy a link. After sending a link to your team, they'll want to make a copy of that practice set or video activity to go into their drive as well. The best way to share a copy link would be to share that through chat. You can send that shareable link directly in a chat message by copying and pasting that link directly into the message bubble and hit send message. Now, when anyone in your chat or anyone you send that to click on it, they'll be able to access your practice set or video activity. Once your team clicks on that link, it will open up a new tab where they will see your practice set or video activity. They will need to click make a copy for that to go into their drive. We will now see that new quiz in our drive. When the sharing link is off, your team cannot preview or make a copy of the resource. If you need to edit a resource at any point in time, you can do so by clicking on it and then selecting edit at the top. You can now add additional questions, answers, or delete a question you do not need and hit done editing. Let's grade and return some assignments. One way that we can begin to grade our assignments is by selecting to review. This will show us the assignments that we still need to review or grade. You can select the assignment, give the students their grades, and then return both at the same time if you'd like. and then we can mark that we have reviewed it. You can also select the class, head over to grades, and then once the students have their grades, you can return all. Even though the students have not turned in their assignments, we can still provide a grade for them. One more time, grades, return all. Now that all the assignments have been graded and returned, we can export those grades and assignments to Infinite Campus. You can select all or select one by one. Please keep in mind that if the assignment does not have a due date, you cannot export that information. So we're not going to export this assignment, but all the others. You will now see on the top right corner that that information is being exported to Infinite Campus. Once it's completed, you have a message on the bottom left hand corner. We can now head over to Infinite Campus and take a look at that class. Now that we see our assignments in Infinite Campus, let's head over to our gradebook. You can access your gradebook by selecting grades or select instruction and gradebook. We can see that we have two uncategorized assignments. To make sure our gradebook is correct and up to date, we will need to add a category for each assignment. For our test, we're gonna select student mastery. And for our plate tectonics assignment, we are going to select student progression. We also need to select a standard grading task. Don't forget, middle schools are on quarter grades. You will still see the six week option, but we'll need to select quarter grades. And again, this is simply for middle schools. Now we're going to save all. And we can now see all of our assignments in our gradebook. Teachers can now mark an assignment for a particular student as excused instead of giving a 0 to 100 score. This will exclude the particular assignment from the student's overall grade. This feature can help in different scenarios, such as wanting to drop a student's lowest assignment 
excusing for an absence or any other circumstance in which an assignment should be not included in their overall grade. Let's walk through how to do that now. After maneuvering to your Google Classroom, selecting the Grades tab, you now have the option after selecting the three dots next to a particular student to select Excuse. That will now be considered excused. Again, three dots, excused. As you can see, the student's overall grade is not affected by the excused assignments in the same way that their overall grade would be affected when we add a grade in return an assignment. Please keep in mind, you may still need to mark an assignment as exempt NIC. Teachers can put an X in the assignment score area or click the arrow in the top right to expand the assignment in the gradebook and then click the X. Exempt assignments display in the gray. Now let's dive in to some of the other features of Google Classroom. We have our class Google Drive folder. Every Google Classroom has a Google Drive folder. This folder will house any assignments that you've created. And finally, we have our classroom settings. By clicking on the settings gear in your Google Classroom, you can make adjustments to your class. Here, I have chosen to name my class my first period gold class instead of having it listed as the course name from Infinite Campus. I've also put in my room number and the subject of my class. If you haven't linked your class to Infinite Campus yet, you can find that option also here in your settings. If you need to make adjustments to your stream of only students can post, only teachers can post or comment, you can manage your Google Meet link here by clicking the down arrow, resetting the link, removing the link, or copying it. This is also where we will enable or disable the ability for the students to see that Google Meet. As we scroll down, we'll see grading scale. You can make all of those adjustments here in your grade calculations. These are the basics that can be adjusted in your Google Classroom setting. Our final topic that we will explore is what Google Classroom will look like from the student's view. Let's log in as a student now. Over on the left hand side, they will also see their to do's. This will show all the assignments that they need to complete. They can select individual classes and what assignments are due or will be due coming up. Missing, they will see assignments that they are missing, whether it's for all classes or an individual class. Done will present the assignments that they have completed and that have been graded. If the student does not see this on the left hand side, they will simply hit the hamburger menu and they can see to do or go to their next class. We can now see all the assignments that we have created today. The people view for students will just show the teachers and their classmates. If the Google Meet is not enabled, the student will not see that. In the classwork tab, they will see all the topics and assignments that have been posted in the class. They can also hit the view your work option to see what is missing, what they've turned in, and what is graded. Keep in mind that turned in means the student has completed it, but the teacher has not graded the assignment. After clicking on the assignment, the student will select view instructions to view the details. As you can see for this assignment, we received a pop-up that the teacher has chosen not to accept any work after the due date. If the teacher has selected for the assignment to no longer accept submissions after the due date, the turn in option will be gray for that student and the work cannot be turned in. The student can add a private comment to the teacher. Even though this assignment is listed as missing and we have moved past the due date, the student is still able to complete this assignment because the teacher has not selected to no longer accept submissions after the due date. It is extremely important that teachers and staff go over how to mark an assignment as done. Marking the assignment as done in Google Classroom helps students and teachers keep track of completed work. It provides a clear indication that the student has finished the assignment, allowing for efficient organization and a communication. Note that the main difference between the student and the teacher view is the grades tab. Students will need to click on the individual work and review work to view their grades, as they do not have the tab at the top. By selecting return, 
they will see the assignments that have been graded. Thank you for joining me today in this introduction to Google Classroom training. You can find this and other resources at jsbs.me forward slash TLC to visit our Technical Learning Center.